Janelle Iliana, female solo traveller, lives her van life with a pet snake and two million subscribers in less than three weeks. Here we go. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Alan Spicer, your YouTube certified expert, and we're going to dive into the world of Janelle Iliana. Janelle Iliana is a 20 year old self solo traveler who has kitted out her own van and gone exploring. And most importantly, and probably why I'm covering her on this channel, she has exploded out of nowhere within just three weeks. She's gone from zero subscribers to by the looks of things, two million by the end of this week alone. And I thought I'd give you my opinions on this rising star. Who is she? And how can we break down what she's done to understand why she has exploded? How this has happened? Is it the algorithm? Is it the channel? Is it her approach? Is she a marketing genius? Is she a marketing plants. Why don't we dive into it? So who is Janelle? Well, she's a 20 year old girl that lives inside a van that she has converted. She's young enough that she's attractive to the fanboy generation, the fangirl generation, you know, the people that like Wayne Direction. Now, I know that sounds condescending, but that's not supposed to mean it that way. I just mean that that generation is much more loyal, much more internet savvy, much more open-minded to personalities and quirks. She is relatable to that audience. She is attacking a set niche, which is very unique. She is quirky and she has the added bonus of having a pet snake called Alfredo. All added together gives a good potion, a good mix, a good formula of something that could be intriguing, something that could hook in a young audience that is willing to watch for an extended period of time, not too young that they don't understand the world, but young enough that they have disposable time. This is what I call the Logan Paul and Jake Paul bubble. If you're 20, you're probably in college in America, or you're experiencing your first pieces of freedom. Maybe you're even experiencing the idea and investigating the idea of going out and being a solo traveler. Maybe you're traveling for the first time. Maybe you have your first bit of disposable income from your very first job. Most importantly, she is unique. Basically, in a world where everyone's showing off their Lamborghinis and showing off how Jake Paul's earning all of this money and it's every day, bro, Janelle is very opposite. She's on her own, in her van, self-sustaining, living her bubble, her life, not impacting anybody else, which makes her very interesting, intriguing. So what is she doing right? What has she done that propels herself from zero subscribers to nearly two million within three weeks? First of all, she attacks SEO perfectly. The title of her very first video was very keyword driven in the title to hit every niche and demographic. Here, here's her video, have a look at the title and I'll break it down for you. Van tour, which is a keyword that people would be hunting for when looking through that niche. Solo female traveler. There's three words there that are very important. Solo female and female traveler make a three word key phrase, solo female traveler, all of which are searchable, all of which are niches within their field. Most traveling channels seem to be couples. So in this case, it's identifying that she's a traveler and she's female. So female traveler that is solo and all have a niche available to them. Lives van life. Van life is once again, one of those kind of hashtags or one of those kind of keywords that are very specific to her niche and with pet snake. And you'll notice the capitalization. Van tour, solo female traveler, and then lowercase lives van life being a keyword is in capitals and with pet snake once again is in capitals. So all of the interesting things, all of the things that you would suggest would be keywords or are unique are in caps. Does that affect the algorithm? No, but you can clearly see the keyword she was aiming for now. In fact, each one of those capitalized words and each one of those phrases is niches for her to slot into, each of which are still relevant to her content, whether it's female traveler, whether it's solo traveler, whether it happens to be with pet snake. Van life and van tour. That's no different than box opening or house tour. And everything inside is very unique and custom created. So once again, very niched, very in focused, very aspirational. What she seems to have done is deliberately gone out of her way to hit multiple niches 
and arrived with a 27 minute video in which you can pull those niches in, attack those keywords, make them the clear focus, make them all relevant to the video. It's no different than what Gary Vaynerchuk says. Make relevant contextual information for the platform that you are on and she's done that so she's made a video that is van life that is a van tour that has a pet snake in it which is a solo traveler all of which are represented in that video and has a long video base so therefore if you watch it for three five ten minutes there you go, you're hooked. And then the algorithm knows that all of a sudden you've hit that sweet spot of five to 10 minutes of, ooh, interesting goodiness. Now, she does have a loyal audience. It seems that floating around before all this, she did have an Instagram account. It may not have been as active as you may imagine. Right now it's has 100,000 subscribers. There's rumors that when she first started, it was much less than that, but fine. If you are audience driven and you're able to push audiences from off YouTube onto YouTube, YouTube then sees a flux of traffic which can trigger an algorithm, which can then suggest you against very similar concepts. Or one of those things where you've watched blah, so you can go and watch others. In other words, if you've never seen me before and then you've seen Roberto Blake and Nick Nimmin and Dean Nimmin and then you watch one of mine, it may say, oh, because you've seen these other people, you might like Alan Spicer. In this case, you may have already been watching YouTube content and then you've gone off to find Janelle and now your behaviors are suggesting to others in your very similar demographic. Because you've proven that you watch these five people and then you watch Janelle, YouTube might go, oh, there seems to be a correlation there, and then start suggesting Janelle to other people that have a very similar watch history to you. If she's already established an audience in Instagram, it will be loyal, it will be dedicated. If all of a sudden your favorite Instagrammer has a new project, of course you're going to share it, of course you're going to be excited about it. So you see that she has a new YouTube profile or TikTok or Vine or whatever it used to be back in the day and you start sharing it. Look at how quickly Will Smith grew the instant that everyone knew that Will Smith was on YouTube. It's like, oh wow, and they all dived in. Same with Jack Black. Exactly the same with Jake Paul and Logan Paul. They decided to step from Vine to YouTube. They brought their audience with them. YouTube saw this as external traffic starting session watch time on their own site on a loop in which the first loads of people come in, they watch it, they share it, they share it to other social media, which then brings new people in, which once again triggers external session watch time starts, and then it starts to snowball. In her case, she's already hit the SEO properly. She's already got an audience. The first video is 27 minutes long. Of course, you're going to watch as much of your first video of your first favorite creator. Just like when I started my podcast, my very first podcast, of course, is going to get more views to start with. Everyone's excited to see what it's all about. So in this case, she's riding the perfect storm. The interest from her loyal fan base pushed against a new YouTube channel. YouTube doesn't know this person and any of their previous session watch time, so therefore it starts suggesting people out that are related. And those channels more likely to have more subscribers because, oh, okay, well, you watch these people and then Janelle and it starts the ball rolling. She's also a very relatable soul. She's 20 years old, so she's not too young that the demographic doesn't understand her. She's not too old that, oh, it's just an old dude or an old lady living in her. She's the right kind of perfect sweet spot. Old enough that she catches the young emerging audience and not too old that she doesn't alienate anyone. 20 to 25, I imagine, is around about the aspirational bubble where you can look at them when you're younger and go, oh, I wish I could do that or, oh, I can do that in the future. Now, I've mentioned this previously. It's a long video. The first video of her two videos is 27 minutes long and the second one is 10, 11 minutes long. So what this means is even if you watch a smaller percentage of her video, you're more likely to get more session watch time. If you've got a brand new channel and you're driving, say, your first 10,000 subscribers over from Instagram, those 10,000 people then watch five, 10 minutes of that video, or if they're really loyal, all of the video, you can imagine the watch time bump it can, it can push. Whilst if her first video was just a normal trailer, for example, where she's explaining who she is for 30 seconds and everyone jumps on it and they're really, really excited, but they've only watched 30 seconds, it doesn't get the same watch time jump. So in this case, she uploaded a video straight away, which was 27 minutes long to push 
entertainment, to push intrigue. And then YouTube goes, oh, all of this external watch time, watching a vast amount of this content for an extended period of time. Because of course your first video is more likely to get loyal viewers that are intrigued that then extends the bubble and pushes it into the suggested algorithm. She has a fantastic view to subscriber ratio at the moment. As soon as she started, she started getting around about 10% subscribe to views. What does that mean? Well, in my case, and most people, the rule of thumb is around about 1%. So for every 100 views, you'll get one new subscriber. If you're doing things really, really well, it might step up more to about 3%. In her case, she's doing fantastically. She's outstripping demand. She's getting 10%. Why? Well, she is a new channel and it is fresh face. So obviously, if no one's ever subscribed to her channel, then the first subscriber is obviously going to be the first subscriber. The advantage she has is she's fresh, right? She's not trying to pile on more subscribers on top of an already 2 million base. So anyone she subscribes will obviously be a gain, not someone that's left and faded back in. So that may help her, but a 10% ratio is also fantastic. I imagine her first few thousand subscribers would have been her loyal audience coming over from Instagram or Facebook or anywhere that they would have previously followed her to initially echo and push out her content. But what may also be helping her percentage is the FOMO, the fear of missing out, the, oh, hang on, what's this? This is a new thing. And the media attention that she is attracting. What media attention? She's currently being pushed by very large YouTubers through the reaction of her growing. Philip DeFranco is just one of many that have mentioned her. Philip DeFranco is one of my favorite YouTubers. He's a news stroke commentary channel that has evolved over time. He's one of the OGs of YouTube. Him mentioning her channel and mentioning how she's exploded pushes his audience towards her. That's a successful shout out that will generate traffic and an intrigue. If out of his five, six, seven million subscribers, even a small percentage, 10, 20, 30,000 people wandered over there to have a look, that's then session watch times for that channel. People are curious, how long are you going to watch that channel for? Also, because a big YouTuber has suggested that you go and check her out, you're more likely to lean on their trust and their loyalty and investigate, maybe even subscribe. This generates a feedback loop. I'm talking about Janelle, and I'm not a huge YouTuber. I know that others have done the same. Brian G. Johnson within my niche as well, Roberto Blake on Twitter. Many others are echoing the who is this Janelle and why is she doing so well sentiment. The amazement that a fresh face can emerge out of nowhere, can go viral, is opening eyes and raising eyebrows. And if we're talking about it within our community bubble, you're damn well sure that other media outlets will do so too. Which, once again, continues to trigger the algorithm. If you imagine that you're pushing a snowball up a hill and first of all you're pushing with your own fans and then a shout out and then somebody else and then somebody else it becomes easier and easier and easier to push. Now I'm not saying that she's riding the wave of just luck. It is the algorithm doing the work and she's done it very successfully. She's triggered something in every fashion. Whether it was planned or not, it's working. The curiosity bubble works. All of these YouTube creators are pushing eyes over there which make them subscribe, that make them watch, that make them share, and then that share brings it back in, that triggers the algorithm because they're external watch time periods coming in to see her videos, which then YouTube goes, oh, all of these external eyes, oh, why don't we push it a bit more? Because it's clearly getting attention, which then gets them put in news articles and blogs embedded on other sites, which then brings more eyes back in. Can you see this ever-increasing loop going upwards out of curiosity. The more it triggers, the more it pushes. The more it pushes, the more it triggers. Because YouTube understands now that this video's got interest somehow. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more eyes that watch it, the more people are curious about the growth, the more they share it. The more they share it, the more eyes come in, the more they're curious and the more they watch it. It just continues to go and grow and roll until it becomes too much that it just rolls down the other end of the hill and then it builds up momentum and speed on its own accord. I sat on her channel earlier today for just five minutes and she gained 100 odd subscribers within those five minutes, 150 odd for that matter. You can see that the snowball is growing and I'm making more and more videos and so are other people. So it continues to feed this loop. Now, personal opinion, there seems to be some guesswork. There seems to be some naysayers against this channel and Janelle in general. This seems too perfect. This seems too polished, right? How come she gets 
a YouTube channel to go from zero to two million subscribers. Is this fake? Is she view botting? Is she subscriber botting? Is this a marketing company? Is she too polished and perfect? She's quirky, she's young, she's cute, she has her own self-sustaining lifestyle, she's relatable, she's attacked a niche, multiple niches, and she's getting attention from other YouTubers. Is this planned? Now, I'll be lying if I didn't say that that was my first opinion. I looked at it and gone, okay, a media company's thrown 200, 300,000 pounds at crafting the perfect thing. Because if you've got the right look, the right feel, you can push anything. The manufactured boy bands, they have things like The Voice and X Factor to manufacture further stars. In the early 90s, they managed to audition members for Take That and became mega stars. Same with Spice Girls and Boyzone and Backstreet Boys. Why not? a YouTuber. And for the OGs of the world, you may remember Lonely Girl. You know, the one that was hovering around making weird video posts. And then we all found out that she was an actress, play, like paid to play a part, that did really well and then disappeared. So, it's not further out of the realm of suspicion that it might happen again, and this time it could be a really good media company that's pushing her. Or it could be good old-fashioned virality. Chris Crocker decided to wail at a camera to leave Britney alone and Charlie bit somebody's finger. It hit the right nerve at the right time. And Janelle might just be the, the perfect mix. The ethnicity, the age, the generation, the social media that you can push behind it, the attention that you can get, the snowball effect that it might generate. If this is 100% above board, imagine if you are Janelle, who has been living in her van, self-sustaining for a long time. You put up a video, right? You even had an Instagram account that was selling stuff maybe to make gas money. Now, you have millions of views on YouTube. You're possibly very much monetized now because I know I've seen adverts. Now you'll never have to worry about gas money ever again and you are 20 years old and you have raised every eyebrow on the internet. I salute you. You are possibly the next big YouTube megastar and in a generation when everyone's pushing everyone and everyone's intrigued in everyone, it wouldn't surprise me if she starts to outstrip and continue to grow at this rate. I wish her all the best because this could be the making of her. This could be the, the making and the mainstream finally hooking on to something that is pure and perfect. PewDiePie is the largest YouTube channel individually on this platform, but he's not a 20 year old female that seems to be self-sufficient. There's a wholesomeness about that that mainstream medias can touch upon. Or is she a marketing machine that nailed it perfectly, that already had a shop, that hasn't made a reaction video to her being viral within three weeks and having nearly two million subscribers? I know if I was a 20 year old, I would have completely freaked out by now. But I'd love to know your opinion. Please leave a comment down below. In the meantime, check out my Jake and Logan Paul video on how I feel that they are hacking the YouTube algorithm using very much the same techniques that Janelle is. Go out there, start creating.